the dollar, the king of money, bedrock of the global economy. It symbolizes the American dream. The more we earn, the more our families have. And every day, nine out of 10 transactions on the global foreign exchange market involve the US dollar. The global economy rides on it. But what if the dollar crashed? And how might that even happen? This is David Wu. He knows a thing or two about the dollar. There's no question that the dollar continues to enjoy a dominant, okay, super dominant status in the global foreign exchange market. A former top Wall Street strategist, David ran the foreign exchange operations at some of the biggest banks in the world. He's known for making some bold and accurate predictions over the years, including that Trump would win in 2016. We're gonna make America great again, you watch and that the dollar would rise afterward. More from David in a bit. First though, why is America's currency so powerful? The US dollar is the global reserve currency, meaning central banks around the world overwhelmingly hold it as the backbone of their foreign exchange reserves. But this wasn't always the case. Up until the late 1930s, pound sterling was the world's reserve currency. Then the dollar knocked sterling off its perch. Two factors caused this. First, New York overtook London as the world's biggest creditor. And second, global conflict. The attack that strikes like lightning. The US emerged from the Second World War as the world's dominant economy, securing the currency's position as the king of money. In 1944, representatives from more than 40 allied and Western governments met in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. Designed to establish the economic foundations of peace on the bedrock of genuine international cooperation. To decide what the world's post-war financial system would look like. The resulting Bretton Woods system meant that every currency would be pegged to the dollar, which would then be pegged to gold. The Bretton Woods system basically worked for as long as international capital mobility was relatively low. It worked as long as the dollar was the dominant currency in the world. But heavy spending by the US on war, the moon landings, and social programs during the 1960s led to high rates of inflation, reducing global confidence in the dollar the dollar started to actually appreciate in real terms and U.S. losing competitiveness. Obviously, this fixed exchange rate system was no longer sustainable and that's why everything came crashing down. In order to bring down inflation and prevent a run on gold, Nixon severed its link to the dollar in 1971, effectively ending Bretton Woods. This led to a devaluation of the dollar, the first of several major dips over the past 50 years proving that the currency may not be invincible. There have been three major periods of dollar decline since the end of the Bretton Woods period in 1973. These periods of falling and regaining value are known as super cycles. Each dip is essentially correcting an overvalued dollar. Many economists today think that America's currency is due for another correction, just like previous super cycles. But an adjustment likely wouldn't mean a crash. To understand what could cause a crash, we need to understand the dollar's strengths and its vulnerabilities. The dollar has retained dominance for nearly a century, and the reasons for its resilience are not just economic. Geography gives the U.S. great resilience. The fact that the U.S. is almost a continent of its own and basically sitting there pretty with very little tension between the U.S. and its neighbors, I think that already gives the U.S. a tremendous special advantage. The U.S. is also resource rich. The U.S. today is the largest oil producer in the world. And the U.S. is very rich agriculturally. And that basically sets the U.S. really apart from most countries in Europe, or for that matter, Japan, or for that matter, China. The dollar's long history of stability and economic growth has also inspired trust and confidence from other countries, making it a valuable and desirable investment. 
people trust the U.S. They trust that basically if they invest in the U.S. dollar, they're going to get that dollar back. Nobody's worried that the U.S. is going to default anytime soon. To illustrate the desirability and strength of the dollar, let's look at trade. Since 1976, the U.S. has consistently imported more goods and services than it exports. This is called a trade deficit. Most countries couldn't sustain such a trade deficit for so long. The reason the U.S. can is because of the strength and value of its currency. The dollar is strong because the trade deficit is big. And the reason being that because people find the dollar and U.S. assets so attractive, people have this unlimited appetite for U.S. assets. So they keep buying dollars, buying dollars, buying dollars. All that capital flowing into the U.S. is then spent on imports. So the trade deficit is a result of demand for U.S. financial assets from abroad. The size of the trade deficit is the exact mirror image of the amount of massive demand for U.S. assets every year coming from abroad. So if the U.S. trade deficit is $800 billion, that means, you know what? The rest of the world wants to buy an extra $800 billion of U.S. assets every year. Another reason for the currency's sustained strength is that no other large economy currently wants to challenge its position. What's amazing to me is the fact how many countries would rather have weak currency than strong currency. For export economies, a weaker currency can be a big advantage because it ensures their goods are cheaper. A weaker currency will basically allow them to be more competitive, more likely to be able to hold on to their market share and maybe even gain market share for that matter. With so many strengths, it's difficult to imagine what could cause the dollar to fall. But one of its biggest strengths is also a potential vulnerability. The U.S. stock market. On the bell. On the bell. Going on the bell. In the last 10 years, U.S. stock markets outperformed the stock market of the rest of the world nine out of the last 10 years. That track record is in large part thanks to the size and success of U.S. tech companies. They dwarf their competitors in countries like Russia and China and are the linchpin for the U.S. stock market's dominance, and by extension, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. The single most important driver of the U.S. dollar over the last 10 years has been the outperformance of technology stocks, U.S. technology stocks in particular. The dollar hinges on the success of U.S. tech stocks, making them a strength and a vulnerability. In fact, if the dollar should ever crash, I think it will have to be led by tech stocks. How likely is a U.S. tech stock crash? Of course, it's hard to say, but there are a few forces that could threaten their winning streak. For one thing, some analysts believe that U.S. tech stocks are overvalued and due for a correction meaning there might be a tech bubble ready to burst. Just like with dot-com stocks in the early 2000s. And just look what that did to the value of the dollar. The bottom line here is that tech stocks, because they're growth stocks, basically their valuation depends heavily on how the market thinks about their long-term earnings outlook. Which doesn't seem great when inflation and interest rates go up. Rising interest rates make saving more attractive than investing, driving down stock prices. And I think there's no question that as interest rates go up and then the Fed is about to start raising interest rates, there's no doubt that this is going to be a major issue for tech stocks. The valuation of tech companies is also susceptible to public opinion and regulation. The public in general has become increasingly distrustful of big tech. People understand that these companies are too powerful. Growing alarm about the size and power of big tech firms, not to mention concerns over privacy, have led regulators in Europe and Asia to wield legislation to rein them in. Similar steps are being considered in the U.S., which would have consequences for their value. But of course, in the U.S., they're also cognizant of the fact that these companies are the goose that lays the golden eggs for the U.S. economy. So from that point of view, 
They want to basically rein them in, but they also want to be very careful not to destroy them in the process because they'll be shooting themselves in the foot. But the threats to U.S. tech stocks go beyond the country's own borders. If foreign tech companies gain an edge in innovation, they could undermine the value of their U.S. rivals, and by extension, the value of the dollar. The source of that competition? China. For the Chinese RMB to threaten the dollar's reserve currency status, China will have to threaten the U.S. status as the world leader in innovation and technology. For now, U.S. tech companies outcompete their Chinese rivals. But geopolitical reshuffling could threaten the status quo, and at some point, the primacy of the dollar. China and Russia joining forces, I think, will potentially give the U.S. a run for its money. If they can somehow pull together their talents in science and technology, they could potentially really make a great team. I think over the next 10 years, there's not much risk for the dollar's reserve currency status. But that status may well hinge on one key sector. And as long as the U.S. maintains its dominance, okay, in technology, I think, you know, dollar basically will continue to do fairly well. Thanks for watching. You can read more of our coverage on the dollar and tech stocks by visiting capital.com in the link below. You can also watch our recent debate between economists Peter Schiff and Steve Keen on the likelihood of a financial crash. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe to stay tuned for more films on similar topics in the future.